when you have After Effects, uh, go to File again and create a new project if you haven't done so. And you should have a dialog box like this. Now you can create, uh, click on the new composition button right here, or you go to composition and click on new comp. Now, this might be a daunting looking interface with all these little tabs and this box here with nothing on it and nothing and nothing. Um, it is a wonderful program. After Effects is a animation, motion graphics, special effects, uh, compositing software. Uh, it does wonderful things. It's pretty much for post-production and animating motion graphics. However, you could edit video on it. It's not the premier cho uh, premier, for preferred choice. I could use Premiere Pro uh, if you're using Adobe products. Okay. Um, there is Adobe Animate as well, and they they all pretty much animate, but they do they're kind of designed for specific things. Okay. Uh, we're gonna learn all of them. We're gonna learn that animation is pretty much the same. Um, uh, on different platforms and different software they all have the same principles okay and we're gonna learn that okay so with my new comp um i'm gonna do it from here composition new composition okay you can call the comp whatever you like i'm gonna just call this uh basics for now and the presets we're gonna learn about uh, a bit about television video okay right now because essentially we're gonna animate for a specific screen size uh, categorized up here are the old school SD standard definition, the old school tube televisions, uh, your basic 420. Then we get into 720 and high definition settings, your HD TV settings. Then we get into uh, your ultra high definition 4K, 8K, and then we get into uh, cinema style uh, letterbox definitions. Typically, I'm going to ask you guys just to click on HD TV 1080. 29.97 seconds, which essentially is 30 frames per second, okay? Uh, if you like to experiment with other formats, you can. But this is a really good format that uh, regulates really well with YouTube and other social media platforms and also works well your television, whether it's um, HD or 4K, okay? So I'm going to select that as my default. 29.97 is essentially 30 frames. It's just a television standard. Uh, there's an explanation why it's 0.3 less than uh, 30 okay this is important to know is duration this indicates the length of your composition or how long your movie is right now i have five seconds you can click and change this so if i want this to be 10 seconds take note that this is hours minutes seconds and frames if my frame rate's 30 every 30 frames will essentially make a new second if I wanted this to be 10 seconds, I would type in 10. Cool little note, if you want this to be, say, 5 seconds, if you just type in 500, it knows it's five, it'll make it 5 seconds, okay? Um, one thing I'm going to go back to is composition, composition settings, and you can always go back and change things. Take note, background color does not change the actual background color. I know it's, it sounds pretty silly, but this really just changes the interface so when you go to export this movie, your background will not be red. And yes, I will be posting this lesson, okay? So just keep that in mind. So I tell students, just keep it black because it gives you a, a better sense of understanding that your screen is black. I'll show you how you change background color in a sec. So again, if I wanted to make this 10 seconds or 5 seconds, I can go back again, okay? So keep that in mind. You can always go back and change this composition settings. So uh, over here, I'm just going to click on fill up to 100% or fit to screen. So technically, I'm actually 46% of the actual real life screen if I were to blow this up to be a real um, 1920 by 1080. Okay. So I have a composition here and you can bring in multiple compositions in. Okay. You can also bring in multiple sets of graphics. Okay. You can create your own graphics inside the program or you can import them. What can you import? Well, you can import pretty much anything. Because it's an Adobe program, if you wanted to bring in, um, say, a logo, okay, on Adobe Illustrator, you can bring it in. In this case, I'm going to merge it, uh, bring it in as a composition. 
based on my document size. And I made a comp based on the actual user user's graphics, okay? So when I'm on my main comp, I can actually bring in that composition into here and animate it, okay? Uh, Julia, question, go ahead. Yeah, so you can import by double clicking here. You can go to file and import as well and say file. And then it opens up a dialog box that allows you to bring in multiple formats. So this is my computer. I have illustrated files here. I have JPEGs. Um, uh, let me see here. So here's a picture of a shoe, just for example. I can bring a picture of a shoe in. Okay. okay? You can bring in, like, so in, 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 images off the internet. Um, can you bring in PSD files? Yes. You can do a lot of things, right? So if I go back to my basics comp, the black screen, oops, sorry. The basics is right here. I can now bring in the JPEG of the Converse shoes and just drag it into my composition. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just demonstrating that you can import graphics, um, JPEGs, you can bring in movie files, MP4s, MP3s. It takes in a lot of different media formats and allows you to animate and make cool multimedia productions, okay? So, um, again, you can also create graphics within the program. So, let me just play with this JPEG I have here. So, I'm going to just hide uh, the other logo I have. It's still there. It just I just hit it. Same as Photoshop and Illustrator. You can hide, eyeball, uh, hide layers by just clicking the eyeball. Okay going into basic animation principles. And this is where I'm gonna get some of the class involved. So, Steven, are you ready? Yep. What do I click to see the basic transformation parameters of this image? Should be that little arrow there, if you can see it. Yeah, right here, guys. It's such a big thing to understand. If you don't click on this little arrow right over here, um, you're not going to have fun with After Effects because this is where all the parameters that are contributed to this image, this is where you can change and animate things. Okay, so knowing that these drop down, kind of a accordion style drop down where it expands other options, you have to know this. If you don't know this, you're going to be like, sir, how do you animate? Okay. Uh, take note, there's also a effects controls that pops up on the top that shows uh, these things as well, okay? But pretty much everything is available when you drop down the accordion style drop down on the effects, okay? Aaron, you ready for the next one? As ready as I can be. Okay. I want to animate this object moving from left of the screen to the right of the screen. How do I do that? Ooh. One sec. I need to think about that again. All right, no worries. Can, we, can I move on to, say, Liam? Maybe Liam knows? Yeah. I'm drawing. I can. Or, or Liam, do you want to try? Yeah, go ahead. So you click the stopwatch on position. Okay, I, there's a stopwatch right here. Yeah. Nice, I clicked on it. It made a nice little blue nugget. Okay. What do I do next? And then to move it to the right, I believe you have to move the time indicator. That's what it says when you hover it over it. That's right. Dr drag it to the place you want it. Okay. Uh, let, let's just say two seconds of animation. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So as you can see here, guys, it says two. You see the 10F and 20F. That's just telling me that these are frames, right? And once we get understanding what frames are, and it'll make more sense to you. But right now, I'm at two seconds in time. Okay, next step, Liam. The next, I drag the, I'll drag the image to the right or left. I'm not sure to make it because sometimes it goes opposite for me. Yeah. Well, at frame one, we were at the left, so at zero seconds, we're at left. And at frame two, we, uh, sorry, two seconds, we want the image to be at the right. Good. That's it, right, Liam? 
Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a line here that's telling you that Il um, After Effects is now animated this object within the two seconds of time. So now I'm going to just back this up. You can see that the object has now shifted from the left to the right. Okay. This is called the animation of position. So now if I press the space bar on my After Effects keyboard, just give it a second here. Now, it may look a little glitchy. I usually show you how this would look from zero seconds to two seconds. Okay. Uh, as, was there a hand up? Julia, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'll just jump into Julia's question. I'll show you the other transformation points. So Julia, let's get back to the issue about changing the, the, the background color. This is how you do it. You're going to go layer, new, and just for now, we're just going to make a solid layer. A dialog box will pop up. Pick and choose what color you want your background. Obviously, in your case, you want something other than black. All right, so pick a color. Same dialog box for Photoshop and Illustrator pops up and in design as well. And I'm going to press OK. Leave this all alone. Just say leave the same settings because it's the same size as your document. I'm going to press OK. Now, people panic when they see this. It's not a big deal. We understand in Photoshop and Illustrator, if we move layers, we can reveal things. So right now, I'm taking that solid and bringing it below. And now I can see it's in the background. Does that make sense? Okay. So you would just make a solid layer and bring it to the background. And then you can do some cool things even with color. I'll show you that afterwards. Okay. I'm going to lock it so I don't touch my background. Very similar to Photoshop and Illustrator as well. So we'll move on. Let's go back to my high top and show you the other transformation properties. Okay. Um, so Liam just demonstrated how we would animate position. We stop, watch it. We tell the computer to activate a keyframe. A keyframe is a, a specific set of parameters that you uh, told the computer at a specific time that you want to do. And then you can you need at least a minimum of two keyframes. You need a starting and an end. You can have as many keyframes in between if you like. What the computer did was called tweening, right? And this is uh, this is not a uh, word made up. It's, it's, it's a word that's used in, it's jargon used for animators. Tweening is the frames in between two keyframes. Okay. So the computer is tweened um, all the frames it takes for this slow animation. Now take note, if I click on this specific keyframe and I brought it closer, say 10 frames, my animation will be faster because now I've told the computer that I need to change the position of this object, but do within 10 frames. So when I play it back, it's going to be faster. Does that concept make sense? Okay. So crickets, that's fine. We're going to move on again and hopefully it makes sense with the next set of parameters. Say I want to change the scale. I actually want this object to start off, say, small to big. Well, um, Vincent, do you want to guide me in how I would do the scaling? Um, I guess um, you could just resize it. How, how, um, how would I do it? So if you want to make it like bigger, probably um, on the first frame, you resize it to be smaller. Okay, so what I gotta do? I gotta click on the. What's this? What's this called? The scale. The scale watch stopwatch, right? When you click on that, it gives you your first keyframe. Okay, so on this keyframe here, it's telling me it's at 100%. It's at natural size. Okay, so you can numerically type it in, or you can click and drag, and you can scale it. Now, if I move forward, well, it hasn't changed the size. Not a big deal. I'm going to click on this to go to the same frame that I use position, but on the scale parameter, I am going to increase it numerically. 
Now you're probably wondering, could I have just clicked and dragged this? Yeah, sure, same thing, okay? Some people just like using numeric because they specify a number. So now what we've done is we animated based on scale. So we said, I want you at this set of time to be this size, and I want you to figure out the mathematics in between this frame over here. Now, what happens if I move this keyframe over here? Well, it will move position first, and then it will increase the scale. So each parameter is independent of each other, but still connected to the object. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Vincent. Um, Claire Isiel, do you want to do rotation? Come on, Claire. Yeah, you can um, do it. I haven't really got a chance to like try it out myself yet. Um, but you go to like click the stopwatch on rotation. Nice. No, no, notice that I brought my timeline indicator to the beginning. Just letting you know. Okay. Because that's important. Like where you are on the timeline is important. Okay. So uh, I'm going to click the rotation like you said. Okay. What's next? And then can't you like type in how much you want it to ro rotate? Okay. Um, do you want to start off rotated or do you want to leave it at zero first and then maybe rotate after? I guess leave it at zero. Yeah, and then move my timeline to, I don't know, say one second. Yeah, sure. Here's, here's a cool thing. I don't know if, you, um, if I taught this yesterday, but say I wanted to go two seconds. Check this out. I can go to the time code, type in 200, and it will go to two seconds exactly. So if you want to be very technical and specific, you can type in exactly where you want the timeline indicator to go. So then when I go to change the parameter, it will change it on that specific set of time. So I'm going to make this like, four, I'm going to type in 45. Okay. So it's a 45 degree angle. So the computer will now animate um, the object changing position and changing scale and changing rotation. Now, if I want this to be all in the same time, so I'm going to click and drag this to two seconds. And I'm going to click and drag this to two seconds. So now, all the animation parameters are going to happen at the same time. So let's see what this looks like. Okay. So that's cool. Let's go on to the next parameter, which is um, opacity. Izio, you got this? What do I want to do next? Sir, I genuinely retained nothing from yesterday. Okay, well, just based on what you just seen right now. Come on. No, I actually do not. Really? It's the same process. You go to opacity, you click the stopwatch. Um, for example, in this case, I want the object to be zero opacity, meaning it's going to be invisible. What? Then I'll literally go to two seconds here. I'll type in, or watch this. I click this nugget on the other and I'll go to two seconds again, as long as I'm here. And then what I'll do is change the parameter at this point of time and make it 100%. So what the computer is going to do, it's going to change position, scale, rotation, and also make it from invisible to visible. Do you see how it's fading with the background? Is that making sense? No? Okay, I'll have to work with you one on one, J double J. Okay. All right. So guys, every object you bring in um, in After Effects, or even every uh, object you create, so you can create graphics. For example, I'm gonna click on this set of tools here. Wow, this looks really familiar, eh? Looks like Illustrator almost. Huh? Well, guess what? It's it is. It's it's vectors. Okay. I'm gonna go star tool. I'm gonna click on my screen a star. Actually, wait a minute. This is on a. Oh, I made a mask. No, I don't want that. Oh, that is kind of cool though. Hold on, I don't. I didn't want that, but 
Okay, let, let me just change the opacity, bring the opacity back. That's kind of confusing right now. Let me just bring that back to 100 for my first frame. Um, yeah, it's making a mask out of star. There's two modes. There's a shape mode and there's a mask mode. Because I had it highlighted, it automatically assumed that I wanted to um, mask the object. So what it's doing is apply. And let me just show you a shape. No, don't make masks. Wait a minute, what's going on? I don't want you as a mask. Sorry, let me go back again. It's in mask mode. I didn't tell it to go in mask mode. Anyways, let me figure that out afterwards. Let me go back step command Z. Um, Yeah, so that's the shape. I want it to be. Just trying to figure out why it's doing masks. Create masks. I don't want I want to create shapes. Anyways, you can create shapes. I'll figure out what's going on with my computer and why it's not actually making it a shape in there. It's making a mask. But even the mask can actually be animated as well, which is pretty cool. Bottom line, guys, these are the basics. Your ability to drop down. Um, I'm going to just delete this mask. So confused. And the drop down for the transformation, your ability to animate position, scale, rotation, opacity uh, on an object. And that once we learn that, how to work with keyframes, keyframes essentially are telling the computer in this specific frame I want to change this parameter and at this point in time I want to change another parameter okay technically guys if you wanted to watch this every 10 frames I'm gonna just get my selection tool go up move 10 second uh, 10 frames go down okay so then the object will go up and down go another 10 frames let me go back up again Okay, so what I've done is told the computer and based on the path, you can see that it's going to go every 10 frames is going to go up and down. But as it's doing that, it is changing rotation and scale, but I've changed the actual path. So you can have multiple keyframes um, within your timeline. Okay. And for example, I'm going to go three frames and I'm going to just say to computer, Let's bring this back to here. Let's change the rotation back to zero. And it's in the middle of the screen again. Okay. So I've taken a, a journey with my image of the shoe going up and down, left to right, rotating and back to normal. And then it stays static for the next two seconds. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to stop this video. And those are just your basics in After Effects. Of course, you need to save your file. So I'll do that next. So you save. Make sure you know where you're saving your file. Okay, I'm going to call this Almeida David After Effects Basics. And save it as an After Effects file. Okay. And I'll show you afterwards how to export it to a, to a video file that you can play for your television or for YouTube, okay?